The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. The pattern that we're looking at right now, just on a very short term, shows you just the whippiness that you've seen from this morning. The futures last night, really, everything was priced to perfection last night. When Apple came out with its news and advanced micro devices had already come out with its news, semis were soaring. The Dow suddenly picked up strength. The uh, futures and the uh, NDX 100 had tanked because of Google and they were soaring. I thought to myself, wow, is this one of those traps that we see every once in a while um, where you see everything just, if you were short, you think, oh my God, if you were long, you're thinking, fantastic, I should have been, I should have been 300% long, etc. And now you got uh, kind of a look, the futures here are up three, and you've been all over the show, the high today has been uh, 29.61.25. And the e-money and 2947, we're trading at 2951 towards the lower end peak E, sorry, peak F in the two-minute chart in the Chapman wave. On the e-money, peak D in the um, five-minute chart and only a C in the in, in the 10-minute chart. But the others really are dictating everything, the shorter term. So let's just get to the nitty-gritties. The dollar, you can see, oh, sorry, the crude oil right now is down at the lows, down to eleven, making the H pattern after peak F in the Chapman. Maybe I should just do that. Where, where did I put it? Oh, let me just show you this. Chapel Wave, we're always looking for this particular pattern from, from most obvious lowest low. You count many four higher peaks at peak D, the fourth highest peak is where other things can happen. You get an instant restart, you get a whole bunch of things. But that is where often some of the deeper declines occur. Yeah, you got your peak D and it's at a three bar uh, Chapel Wave instant restart pattern, but it did continue higher. And then that M-shaped pattern of the MACD and the daily crude oil did not confirm that peak F top, six highest peak at 66.60 on the 23rd of um, April. And the stochastic was much lower, on balance volume immediately turned down. And now I've got to be a little worried about this H pattern, the lowercase h, that's what we look for in patterns. It went right to the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart at a peak C, if there's no new high this week, recovery high that is. So I'm watching this very closely because the technicals are still very strong in the weekly chart. My suspicion is that the 61 to 60.50 area is really going to be the test. That's going to be a test of, of a lot of things. Test of the general market as well because it's kind of followed. Crude oil and the, and the markets have been going up together. Let's get back to our little story here. I'll do this in greater detail. That's what I was asked to do because that little brief uh, prelude that I do is an update at noon. It's really just too short to go into all the different time frames. Now, peak D double top. Look at the failure pattern in the MACD. Look at the stochastic way lower, but the on balance, on balance volume, the blue line is, has pushed much higher. And the relative strength is lower than it was at that peak D, but mm, it's pretty good at about 63%. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying it better be perfect what the, the Fed says tonight, uh, this afternoon, that is, because... If there's to be another move to the upside, as if it's the start of another a breakout pattern, you want to see the Dow in that. Let me just show you this for a moment. Look at all these resistance levels at 26,000, all the way to 26,918. So there's a lot of resistance. But if you look at this particular chart right here that I show my subscribers to my opening call, look at the 120 minute char chart. I have done, I don't think I've ever seen as many. Now you need to spike above all these 26,600s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, about seven or eight resistance points, but only two at 26,427 and 26,438 are the um, support levels. So this is going to be a very important, maybe we, we might just go sideways, I don't know, but I'm thinking this is the most, this is where you can expect the most volatility and a peak D probably forming in the 120 minute chart uh, but it did go higher. It did go up above that arch formation. So that is good. And if I was to do a, um, there are, if I was to do a support levels, 28, 
sorry, 26,006, what is that? Oh, faint. Uh, 26,583. Just watch that level on a very short term, 120 minute basis. A break under that would say, uh oh, we're in for at least a pullback coming in. And that's really what I'm looking at. Okay, let's get on to our story. The weekly chart is still fabulous. The Magdis goes stochastic's flat at 97%. 97.2, it means a dollar eighty and you get to 100%, which you never get to. I've never seen 100% in the MACD, uh, sorry, in the stochastic. So this is flat and good. It just says, could be a pullback, could be sideways, could go down to, say, the 26.310 level again, maybe even take a little more time another week, make another cup formation, this time with the lower le higher left side and lower right side instead of the lower left, higher right side. All these cup formations are really important. One of the things I want you to look at here is that the monthly chart hasn't yet uh, extended that leg B into May because May has only just begun today. So what happens in May is going to be very important. And today, this afternoon, could be it, that it goes to 26,696, and we've extended leg B. Gray leg B is still in the monthly chart. Uh, the S&P has made an all-time high. Uh, it did it again today. It's trading at 29.49.07. This becomes a new leg D. Let me get rid of that because that was from yesterday. The G slash C has become another D. That is really good with the Chapman wave. I really don't have time to talk about it much today other than I might. If I have a chance, I don't think I will. This is what I call a Chapman wave flat base, unconventional restart. And it says that no matter how high you go, if you keep coming back towards the top of this bar right here at about 26, uh, sorry, 29, 18, uh, there's a good chance that when you make your top, you're coming right back into the 2900 area. And that's just, uh, that, I'll do it briefly. That, that's what I'd be looking at if this is the pattern I'm thinking of. But the stochastic is at 93%. That's still good. And the MACD is flat and good. It's going to take some bad news event. I uh, just don't see it on the horizon right now to really smack it down below uh, 29.31 and then 29.22. All right, here we go. Weekly chart still very strong, new all-time high in leg C. That's very positive. And a V-shaped pattern with an all-time high on the right. I'm going to talk a lot more about these V-shaped patterns over the next few days, especially Friday in my technical hour with the Chapman Wave methodology being a little bit more elaborated on. QQQ, 100, uh, NDX 100, trading right now. Hasn't taken out the, the high of 191.32 May three days ago, but definitely that Google smacked to the downside, tested the 14 period moving average for the very first time since it broke above it back in late March. This is a, a hint to say we're getting a little bit of softness coming in, so just be a little careful here. Fabulous leg C in the weekly, fabulous leg in the monthly. Let's go to the IWM. IWM is the Russell 2000. This is going to an alternate count. This is stalling. This is really struggling a lot. Yes, it's gone to a leg C briefly above the peak B that was made at 159.50 back in March, the week of the 1st of March. It's gone to a high three days ago of 159.61. I want you to, just as we're about to go to the break, I want you to show you gold. Gold is down three dollars and a half at 1282. I want to talk a little bit about this and chart patterns. I'm going to put up wheat, just wheat. Nice green candle, but it hasn't meant anything lately uh, for wheat. I'll talk about these commodity, the commodity area when we get back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website, you can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. All right, we're back. So I'm looking at at gold, and I thought, all right, I like to gold. I like to do gold. I like to use silver. I haven't looked at silver all morning. Oh, look at that red candle. Look at the look at the the harmony of these red bars. It's as if there's a program seller out there. <clears throat> Actually, I didn't recall seeing this. I've seen it green, but I've never seen it red. Look at that. It's as if there's a program seller, and every five days or so, this program seller just says, you know what? I'm out of my silver. I'm done. I'm never looking at silver again for the rest of my life. I want to get rid of my, um, you know, 20,000 uh, bars. And <laughs> I don't know what it is, but this is just a terrible chart. Just making lower lows under the 14 period moving average, the black line there. This is terrible. So now do we have an inside bar like we always have after the big red candle tomorrow and start to move up? Or maybe today there's a turnaround. It better be because, and that would say that the Fed is talking about higher rates, no, lower rates, lower rates. And uh, wow, I don't know. All I can say is that this is daily, weekly, and monthly are looking just horrible it's going to take a lot to repair it let me look at um let me look at platinum oh double top chapman wave c1 c2 it's a lovely technique if you learned how to use it uh it makes the top and it's turning around this could turn out to be more an, an e than a b over there in the weekly chart the, not good let me look at palladium pal p-a-l-l -L. this is the palladium aberdeen physical palladium Trading at 126.24, down 4.47. And there's that square, that rectangle that I drew a while back. I said you trade within the range, and we went just above it, went back in it. Now we went just below it, but we go back in it. I don't know, but that weekly chart is not good. Um, well, let's go back now. We want to look at the euro, EURUSD, euro dollar currency pair, trading at, um, oh, up nicely, 1.1243. Up 0.02, hmm, three good candles after the nice turnaround green candle of the 26 at 1.11121. 1, 1, 1, 1. I like it in terms of the weekly chart. Finally, there's a little bit of a sign that says the MACD is holding well. The stochastic, oh, it's still flat at 20%. I don't want to see it rally. I don't want to see it flat. That's like when the you see the uh, stochastic up at the 97, 98% level and just not turning down at all. Also, I don't like this. This is 
this is when I see this, this is the yo-yo formation. This is the formation that reminds me of Six Flags. Uh, you've got the roller coaster. I this, this sine wave zigzag is not the pattern that I like very much because it just means it's going to continue rotating with the price in the same uh, vol volatile uh, uh, rolling, looks like rolling hills. And it just says, oh, this could fail again. So the euro needs very quickly to get one to 1.135. Sorry, 1. Yeah, 1.135. And I say quickly, I mean in the next couple of days, even if it pulls back a little bit. Let's look at the USDJPY. That's the yen. Uh, yep, it's pulled back the equal amount. Looks like the dollar after the peak D. Boy, these peak Ds are absolutely fantastic in the Chapman Wave methodology. Look, there's your peak D in the dollar. Goes from 98.33 to today's low of 97, where we are now at about 97.29, 97.27. That area, this, look at the way you've turned down. I got to watch this closely because now we're back into the range of the 97, uh, 35 to maybe even 96, 80 area. So what happens with the Fed today is going to be a really important peak D maybe in the weekly chart. And look what happened the last time you had quite a, you had a whole bunch of weeks before you broke out to the upside. 97.71 was the high the week of the 14th of December. It tested beautifully back on the uh, week of the 8th of March. Couldn't break it. He went to 97.71, had to pull back again, and boom, goes right out of it. So this is going to be very important for the dollar. So that's that area. Now, if you want to look at this, let's do this dust wheat. That's the wheat itself is trading up six and a quarter at 4.35. Uh, that is after yesterday's low of 4.20. Uh, Four twenty-six round number low. So that's a, that, that, that's a potential, but the flat stochastic says, nah, it's going to take a lot more than that. Soybeans ugh, down seven three quarters at eight forty-six. Where out of that 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 um, uh, fund? Uh, we just got out. I'm, I'm not interested in messing around with agriculturals right now. Maybe when they turn around. And this is the corn. The corn was up a little bit before. Now it's up at one point three one three quarters at three sixty-four. Uh, 364 round number. Yeah, I'm just making a leg B. Uh, this is the one that's a little bit better. Not great. Okay, we've done that. Now let's do this. Amazon. Amazon trading. Remember yesterday we talked about Costco, uh, Target. Mm, what was the other one? The question was on Costco. I decided to include Target and Walmart. So Amazon, that's just taken so much from everybody else, but it hasn't made an all-time high. 2050.50 was the high of September 2018. Plunges down to round number 1307 low in December. Had a spectacular move to 1939 right now. It hasn't quite taken it. What I think what the Fed does this afternoon is going to be really important. Everything about everything I'm doing now is sensing that there's, there's a tiredness now to the market. Even some of our positions that we've had fabulous, a fabulous run to the upside. They just start to look a little bit tired. And I let me just show you. I don't mind because you know you, you've got to get my newsletter to be able to get. In, a, in the correct position. So we go we went to a peak here, 200.42 in the um, IYT, the Transportation Index uh, Fund, and um, it's trading right now at 192.87, down seven, $7 from that high, almost eight. <clears throat> but it still looks very good in the weekly chart. We'll see what happens there. IAI, which is the broker dealer, very sharp move to the downside, down 78 cents at 63.05, but it hit 64. A point one two with a two bar Chapman wave two bar reversal yesterday. Bank D's very good, but turning down. Stochastics excellent at ninety point eighty. So I'm watching this one very closely. But it said it was getting a little bit tired. Look at that cup formation breaks out and then it can't hold the gain. Um, I'm a little worried. That's all I'm saying right now in the very short term. Leg D in the weekly chart. You can just go over these things one by one. Now what I am looking at that I think is kind of kind of intriguing is that Apple, look at this, Apple went to a leg D. Look at, what, look, at, look at all this today. Oh, I wonder if I can find it. I'll try to find it. It's just so interesting in the Chapman Wave methodology um, what these Ds can do and where they occur. So Apple spikes to a high today, all-time high of, sorry, a recovery high, all-time high is 233.47, peak D in the monthly. So we've pulled back very sharply to 142 almost 100 points, and now it's running very sharply up to 213 after the news yesterday. So this is very good action. So this is a D. 
Let me see if I can find that list. I'll show you something very interesting. Let me see. Dave White posted it earlier to the den. There we go. Right, let me just see. I'm a, maybe I, I, maybe it's a silly thing to do, but it's it is it is fun. Um, where is the list? Okay. So SMG. <clears throat> SMG is uh, Scott's Miracle Grow. Uh, it's in the right area. Seeds, gardens, cannabis. I mean, they do everything right. This is the the, the shovels, the picks and shovels of the of what you really want to be buying, probably in that whole area. So uh, it's trading at 90.47, up 5.45, hit a high of 94.49 this morning. In what? A gap up leg deep. I couldn't even tell you how many stocks. They've just come out with that same thing. LLL stock, I actually wanted to put in my newsletter. Oh, it gaps up to an F. Uh, that's important. L3 Technologies, I'll be right back. Dow's only up nine. S&P's now down. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We're back. So I'm looking at Boeing. Boeing is up at dollar ninety nine at three seventy nine sixty eight. I think this Boeing story is going to have to. It's going to have legs. I think that there's something going on that is really not good. So it's more um, how it impacts earnings. I think this is the first time you're looking at Boeing. I'd said this quite some time ago that I thought Boeing was likely to be making. Uh, I no, who knew anything about a crash? Come on, I mean, let's face it. But what a second crash! But I'd say that but I think that Boeing <clears throat> has a serious problem in terms of the chart formation, and that there was a really good chance, as it was going to those highs around about the 440s, that it would come back and retest the Chapman wave, the body, the the, the arch of the body at 
and that if it took it out, be careful because the longer it stays in that body, the longer it's going to be consolidating. I would not be surprised if Boeing just goes nowhere for a while. I'm not sure it's going to break down and once again get close to the 363, 200 period moving average. But I do think there's enough bad news out there that it could really impact them. And you know that um, Airbus, you know, the, the, there is some competition, not all that much, but enough to make, uh, make uh, I think, Boeing pretty nervous. So I think upside's limited. I'd be watching it, and that's going to be a part of what, what impacts uh, the Dow as well. That's the one thing. The other thing is I want to look at you. What was ITA? ITA. Uh, was that ITA? Yeah, that's the aerospace. I prefer to go to PPA because that's the one I do all the time. That's gone to a leg E as we speak. Uh, right there is D, and now I'm going to put in the E. I don't think that. No, it's not an instant restart. It's an E. So here again, we're looking at extremely a beautiful, beautiful set of of, of uh, uh, chart patterns, daily, weekly, monthly, and this is the Invesco Aerospace and Defense. Remember, it, it includes aerospace as well. Uh, sorry, defense as well. So this is saying it's at an all-time high. Uh, just, I think you've got to be a little careful here. Um, next question I had was, right, let's go to the den question right here, which is, get rid of that. Let's just look at copper, HG, HG trading. Oh, oh, pain. Uh, what was it, Elizabeth? Elizabeth. Oh, you remember who? Who was the guy? Um, Sanford. Sanford was it? Sanford. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Um, yeah. Look at this. Um, copper is down 3.41 percent. No, this is not good. Oh, what is the Fed going to do today? Because I mean, this is part of your inflationary aspect. They need to get inflation. The off inflation thing, I mean, you go to the supermarket, there's inflation everywhere. Um, so what's the question? Because isn't it interesting that from the time Trump began his presidency to present, steel stocks have gone straight down. Do you think they are a buy? So I did this in my webinar. I spoke about it. And I said, not yet, not yet, not yet. Let's wait. And we're still going to be waiting. I'd still be waiting right now at 38.11 on the SLX. The um, Van Eck Vector Steel ETF. Let's just hold it, um, hold it, a little, uh, hold off a little longer. I do think it's going to be a buy. In fact, it has to become a buy in the big mega move that I'm anticipating later on. But I, I'm not putting it into that category just yet. Um, that's steel. Now, isn't that interesting? So, wait, you said that since uh, um, Trump got in. So Trump got in. What was it in November the sixth, two thousand and sixteen? Wasn't it? 16? 17? 16. I mean, you know, time flies. So 16. Uh, let's go to November. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So, yeah, it hasn't done very much, has it? It's gone from the 30 area to the 51. Oh, well, mine, that was good. 51s and then back down again to the 30s. Trading right now 38, 11. Yeah, just have patience. It'll, it'll get there. Um, now, the other thing that I want to do, uh, deal with right now is um, I want you to talk about some of the, look, the IBB. I had a question about the IBB recently, and I said, you know, just lay off for now. In fact, um, a number of people who have actually talked to me about the stock market, they said, what's happening to the pharmaceuticals and the uh, biotechs? And I've said, just as long as there's a political aspect to it, just keep, keep in mind that um, it's kind of had its day in the sun. If you look at Kenmore Square here in Boston, the whole MIT area, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where they, they kind of have combined programs, et cetera, with some of the biggest, uh, Biogen and all these others. Um, I think that they, they, they're they paying for people that just, it's unbelievable the prices that they're paying to get new people and what it costs them, and to put them up and all that, and build offices, et cetera. And if you go from 122 to the 80s, and then you're rally back to 116, and now you're back at 106, I think just it, take it, step aside for a little while. It will be back. But just in the meantime, politically, I think it's just expedient to stay away. If you look at the PPH, that is the pharmaceutical ETF. It is called the Van. Where is it? Where is it? Oh. What happened? How many times do I have to notate this? And I don't remember my um, my being pushed offline. So I don't know why I've lost those charts. They're there. It just moves from one folder to the other. And I'm going to redo the darn things. 
Yeah, so it made a peak D in the pharmaceutical area. The Van Eck Vectors Pharmaceutical ETF uh, made a peak D at about 65-ish, and now it's, and we've pulled back sharply to the 54s, and now it's trading at 58. Just, I, I just be careful. There's so many other areas. That's another question. Question I had about Ford. Ford was doing very nicely recently. Uh, it's just gone to a leg D right now. Gaps up on some oh, earnings news. Gone to a D. Maybe now it's going to pull back a little bit. I love the fact that Ford is doing nicely. I want to see American automobile companies doing well. Let's see what GM's doing. GM uh, Ford is trading at 10.37 down nine. Oops, excuse me. That's not what I wanted to do. That is a plus sign. So a GM right now. So it's had a fabulous move from 748-ish up to today's high of 1050. Wow, that is really a very nice move. General Motors. General Motors is made a peak D in the Chapman Wave in the daily, peak D in the weekly, kind of consolidating, but it has gone from the 35s to the 40 area, and now it's trading at 3880 for digesting the gains. Syria, I want you to look at Syria, because I mean, I mean, most of the cars these days, I think, I'm not sure, but have a chance to have Syria just better embedded, and then people will sign up, and of course, they've got this terrible bookkeeping, I don't know what they do. But um, they charge you all of a sudden. They raise prices from the some six or seven bucks a month, or ten bucks a month, to or nine ninety five. I think it really was to twenty four something. Now they're throwing in a whole bunch of stuff nobody wants. <laughs> and now uh, you yeah, call them up and you say, "Hey, I, 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 I'm done. I'm done with uh, Sirius XM satellite. Um, well, what can what can we do to keep you? Um, hold on, hold on a second. I'll call my I'll, I'll call my um, uh, supervisor." And of course, they put you on hold for about a couple of seconds, not doing anything because the script says if they say they don't want to re up, then just tell them, okay, you can come back again for five or six dollars with tax um, a month. Uh, so I don't see anything here, yeah, pity, because it could be, I mean, it's a great idea. But think about this you pay for your Siri, you pay for your Alexa, you pay for a uh, Prime, uh, Amazon Prime, then you pay for your um, uh, Netflix. Geez, these can really add up after a while. I think there has to be at least one company that just does the whole caboodle. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, next thing I want to look at here is <clears throat> within the context of the different sectors, the IYC we spoke about yesterday, because that's how I got into Amazon. Amazon is part of it. Has it made a new recovery high? 218.33, and the high the other day was 218.28. This is by 15 cents on the day is young. Leg D in the weekly. I think so many of these are getting a little tired and just need a breather. I'll be back, Basil Chapman. Dow is up 18 S&P. If you're down. in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from 30000 to 75000 the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when and gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently 
currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So it looks like some bad news thing. Suddenly the Dow's down six and the S&P's down three. I don't know why. Look at the E, e, e mini. You remember we had that sell signal at a peak F top in the two-minute chart just before noon. Uh, and then it just, look, it hasn't even gone back to the pink line, the nine-period moving average. It changes to pink on the way down. Um, and and that is at 29.46.65. It's at 29.44.25. Trying to find some support here. Peak D in the two-minute chart. This is... Uh, but anything can happen between now and one o'clock uh, and two o'clock, an hour and a quarter to go, and then the Fed's uh, news comes out. So this is what I'm looking at here. The co a couple of questions came in. NBEV. Uh, NBEV, you know, I... The reason why I'm kind of avoiding these guys right now is uh, as individual stocks rather than just to have the ETF, is that I prefer just at this particular moment, because you remember, they, this is like an IPO. It's, I mean, let's face it, this is a brand new sector in the stock market. And even though this, um, talking about cannabis, has been around, I mean, I remember back in South Africa when I was uh, growing up, uh, it was called DAGGA, D-A-G-G-A. It was evidently way more potent than uh, uh, most most countries. I don't know why. That's what they said. I know I've never smoked any in my life. I just I was an athlete, and I just have never had any desire whatsoever to take even a puff of anything. So that maybe it's my my problem, but it doesn't matter. I'm just talking about this as if I'm an outsider looking in. So New Age Beverage Corporation, 518 right now, down 22 cents. Uh, so the question is, hi, Basel, four days ago, NBEV gapped up, today gapped down. What is your opinion on how to play this through the next few months? I have a stop in place at 4.87. You know, I don't disagree with you. Um, I don't... I know that you got in, at, you got in pretty well. I can't remember now. You don't say what you got in at. I think you got in around about the 470 area, 480. I'm just, I agree with everything you've said. Now, if you're looking at in, in Bev, New Age Beverage because you know something about it on a fundamental level, I can't even go there. I know nothing about it on a fundamental level. But on a purely technical level, what I'd mentioned a little while back is if I was looking at this and I thought, what is this? I would have said, this looks like the old biotechs in the old days, where they, they just, it's as if they, there's a news, they put out a news report every once in a while, and the stock spirals up, and usually that news report, when you go into in depth, you find out that, mm, you know, they had to pay their, uh, their, their CEO or their whatever it is, uh, salesperson, and the way to do it was to give stock and have the stock really skyrocket, probably the person sells it, gets out and gets a salary for that particular three months. I, I have no idea. I'm just saying that's, that's the way it looked anyway. And this looks the same. So this is news related. And I suspect at some point, the 9.99 all-time high that was made back in um, 
September, I think it was, of last year, I think that's going to be hit. What do you do in the, in, in the interim period? Well, you've got to stop it at 4.80. I would probably say, you know what? I take a slightly, I'd have two positions. One is your 480 stop, but I'd have a little position that just says, you know what, put it into a draw and just wake me up in six months or a year. Just wake, have a little bell go off when it hits $10.50. Uh, $10 and, uh, 50, 50 cents. and that's just the only way I can do it. But if you're looking at it and you're saying, what, what do I expect? I think this trading range is starting to get smaller and smaller. And the big, the big gap that you had from the 480 uh, area all the way to the 663 or so uh, level, now it's smaller. Now the range is the $5 to about 560. And the moment you see the start to trade above, if you have not been stopped out, you see it trading at 568 or 572. I would immediately say some part of that position has to have a profit motive in it. And I would raise the stop. I'd raise the stop and say, if I get taken out of that, I can always put it back at a lower price. I just don't want to go through the whippiness again. But some part of it then, because you like the, obviously you like this particular stock, I keep it. I think it's going to one day. I can tell you now, based on the Chapman methodology, it's a little late in the, in the cycle. But at any point, if this is trading at a halfway point, at $7.30 on a weekly basis, if it closes any week at 7.30, there's a real good chance it's going up to the nines and even uh, higher. That's, that's just the way I have to look at it. But you, you, I don't know how you trade it short term. It's really tough, all of these. Well, I was asked about GWPH, which is GW Pharmaceuticals. Look at that. On a smaller basis, it's had the same thing. For the last uh, uh, nine, 10 weeks, it's just been tra in a trading range. Big trading range, 150 to 180. Hey, but think of that as 1.5 to 1.8. It's almost the same. You know, you're trading even bigger percentages. So um, that's all I can say. Now, the next thing I had was, okay, yep, the semiconductor index. So advanced micro devices has a great move. It said now the, the SMH is at 116.64. The high today is 117.88. All-time high is 120.71. It hit 113.49 the other day. It bounced. Um, AMD comes out with earnings yesterday. Great. Everything seemed to be just wonderful. It gaps up. It gaps up. And it goes today. The high is 29.15. But actually, I can tell you now. So yesterday, it closed at 27.63. I did see it up a dollar 80 intraday, intra evening after the bell. And it spirals. So it went, you know, it's not, it's, it's up 17 cents. It's the exact opposite of what you're looking at uh, uh, in, in that um, NBEV. Look, now you've got a trading range. This trading range has gone even smaller now. And I'm just saying to you right now, if advanced micro devices, which I think it's going to do, starts to trade under 2680, uh, I should say closes under 2680, there's a good chance it's just made a short-term top and it's going to have to digest the peak E gains in the weekly chart. So I'm looking at this and what the Fed does today. I, if it wasn't the Fed, I would say very confidently right now, I think that there's a tremendous amount of resistance upside and that resistance could in fact impact the upside. But you never know because if the Fed comes out and says, we're going to drop the rates a half point, I'm not sure why they would want to do that. Look, everything's on on. What, what do you want to need to do it for right now? I mean, everything's working. Uh, I'm not so sure why they would do that. But if they did say, there's a possibility, but uh, we want further data. Uh, we, we data influence, like uh, Janet Yellen used to always say. Uh, I'm data influenced. Um, let's wait for that. I, I just don't. This is something here just tells me to be a little cautious. No, something's telling me to be a little cautious, but if the Dow closes, the whole market this afternoon, instead of being up 150 in the Dow, uh, 20 points in the evening, if there's a reversal to the day's lows, then I think it's going to put, um, I think it's going to put a damper on the market at this particular point. And remember, rectangle formations last a lot longer than you anticipate, and if it happens towards the upper end of a range, usually you break to the downside. So it makes it really important that advanced micro devices goes to th over 29.95, goes to the 30 area, and it does it within a couple of days. 
and that would be very positive. I, I would admit immediately. So we've got one more break, and then we've got the end of the show. Remember, check my uh, opening calls, my daily newsletter, very comprehensive. Um, this is a very important moment we're at right now. We're going to be even looking at the XLF in a moment. We'll come back and talk about the XLF. Leg E, I care, Leg E. This is where you expect some kind of a pullback. I'll be back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Well, folks, I was asked about NVIDIA, NVDA, trading at 182.57, up $1.57. It's really just filled in the gap. It's made a, a, a trough A, then a trough B. The MACD is still very weak. The stochastics are 32%, trying to turn up. But the weekly chart is really not bad at all, but I do think that it's a little overbought on a short-term basis. And all I'd say to the question is that if it closes under 180, I suspect it's going to make the H pattern do a retest of the, of the uh, mid-170s. It needs very quickly to get to the 184, 80, 185, 30 area. It really needs to get there so you can try to test the 200-period moving average. So this is, here again, it's very important. Um, so... Uh, I, I just think it needs more time. That's really what I'm looking at for NVIDIA. Akamai's question is Akamai trading at Akamai Technologies. There again, look at that. Huge spiral to the upside, goes to peaky, all-time high um, at 86.19, except for trading right now at 82.13, up two. I think that a lot of these gap ups are going to, they're going to have to take a little breather. That's my thinking, regardless of what the Fed does. But it is a leg E in the monthly, and that is very good. Uh, technicals have improved a lot. There are a lot of stocks like this. So let me just make it real clear. We've got the Fed coming out in just over an hour. That's going to be very important. Is how, I don't care what they say. 
It's how the market reacts. Keep in mind, if the TLT, the Lehman 20-year T-bond fund, trading at 124.15, by the end of the day is up in the near 124.80 or 125, that's going to suggest that rates, yeah, the rates will be lower, but I'm not sure it's because the Fed says anything about that. I think they're going to try to ameliorate all that. They're going to be trying to show that they're very fair. They're not listening to the president. They are listening to the president. They're not listening to uh, the market. They are listening. They don't, know what, they don't know what's going on. So I suspect they're going to try to say data dependent, and we're going to see what happens next. No change, uh, but there's a chance we might lower rates. They might say something like that. But I don't think they're going to do anything. Maybe not. Maybe they do six points. Who knows? Anyway, back at the ranch, that's what I'd be watching. The TLT starts to drop back to 123.45 uh, from the 124.15 level. That says, okay, uh, rates are moving up a little bit, uh, and uh, market, it just it depends. If the Dow at 3 o'clock this afternoon is instead of being up 60 points or more, is down 30 points or more, I think we're in for a rest. Just keep it like that. Make it simple. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow. And